Hello there, everybody. How you doing? Thank you for joining tonight. Looking forward to talking with everybody and seeing how everybody's feeling. And look at all the wonderful friends from all over. Good to see everybody out here. Uh, this is like we should do this on a regular, regular uh, kind of thing, don't you think? Yeah. So we got a lot of fun things to talk about, mainly just music and in the direction of, uh, you know, everybody's artistic life and some updates on the things that I've been doing. And uh, we can work that for a little bit. Um, San Antonio, Texas. How you doing, John? Yes, indeed. So um, feel free to um, put anything in there in the chat if you uh, want me to address it and what you uh, would like me to kind of say. I can send hand signals because I can't really read. <laughs> Make this a regular, you're saying, huh? I can do that. We can do that. We just flip a switch and it's done. We can do that. I'm telling you. We can do all of this. Love you guys. I just want to know um, that uh, you guys are feeling good in these tough times. You guys feeling good in these tough times? Aren't groceries cheap enough these days? Don't worry, we're not going to turn this political. <laughs> yes, hi from me. Brian, how you doing in Denmark? I had a great time over there. Played in Denmark with Steve I. I remember that. That was just a brilliant time. You doing well? Yes, indeed. Good to see you. Look at all my friends behind me. I brought some of them, these guitars. I, I can't afford any cases, so I got to put them in that rack there. And uh, that's how that works. I got an acoustic back there, too. That's pretty cool. And what do you think about my violin? See my violin? That was actually my first instrument. People think it's the piano. It's not. It was actually the violin. I started with that, and uh, I realized my hands were too big, so I needed a guitar. I realized that early on. I was about seven or eight years old when I realized I needed a seven string. Do you believe that? I don't. So we're at the Q and A, are we? So let's get that rolling. Yeah. Let's ask. Let me see. Let's see. Are they going to ask me some questions? New York City is very close to where I'm from in Massachusetts. And my 
lovely sister Polly is there in that town. And uh, it's probably going to be when we got a gig over there. We've got some really cool things going on with uh, the new cab record with Bunny Burnell and myself and some surprised artists we'll tell you about. And uh, playing in that area and in, in the West Coast, and, and I mean, I'm sorry, in New York and the East Coast is just like something that I've always loved. The energy in New York is truly amazing. You'll see it. You'll read about it. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know, and you can see it on the website, of course, uh, on my official website. Uh, looking forward to getting back there. But I think i got to let winter get done first. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are for real with that cold weather. Here, every day was like 115, 120 for a long time, and it's still pretty warm today. But, oh, you got to be for real with that cold weather. Another question there. Do I feel that today's music lacks passion? It depends on what you're passionate about and what you expect. I mean, you know, if I wanted something that was very aggressive for me, I, I shouldn't, I don't think I would be listening to things that uh, would be lacking that. And I think it's all about what you achieve. And the beautiful thing about today and the internet so you can find things really quickly, but it's a different time than it was, you know, five years ago, five minutes ago. Everything is always moving forward. So I think the beautiful thing about it is music is really at our fingertips. We have the ability to find these things like rather quickly. So I don't really think that music is lacking passion. It just depends on what you're expecting or your outlook is all about. That's what I think. I'm feeling good. I am feeling good. I, 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 I'm feeling healthy and I'm eating right. Although I won't tell you what I had for dinner tonight, <laughs> but, but I'm eating right. I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm feeling a lot better than I did some years uh, back. Thank you very much for that. Well, I can't play that violin, but all right, I'll be honest. I don't think I can really play any violins. No, I kind of gravitated to the guitar in terms of the instruments with the necks. Yeah. Mike, good to see you and good to wear this shirt. I love this shirt. We got to... um. We got to get one with a more current year, though, don't we? It looks like I got to get over there. We'll work this out. What is that? What is the Corfu Rock School is just this beautiful school by Mike Fieska uh, in Corfu, Greece. And you go there for a lovely extended amount of time and you study with these, these artists that, that come over and you jam with them. And we give like private recitals and we watch them jam. and. It's really just a, an amazing location. It's an amazing school, and it's a beautiful thing to be, you know, to be uh, involved with. I had a great time going there. I went some time ago, and uh, I'm ready to go back. It's about time. It's about time for me. So, Lee, uh, let's see. What, what, uh, made in Japan. <laughs> uh, yes, let's see. I think I've mentioned they're telling me these wonderful things. I just had this instrumental record come out not too long ago, Equilibrium, and I'm working on a new one now. But I'm also working on uh, the new cab record with the great bass player, Bunny Burnell. This is a lot of fun. This is a cool record. This guy is just like the, one of the most unique bass players on the planet. And uh, he's just an, an immense talent. He's played with Chick Corea and so many wonderful players, you know. Uh, and, and, and composers. So we're about ready uh, to get that record out there. Um, pretty much all the parts have been played except a few. And uh, that's uh, how we're looking at that. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I think you will. The last record, uh, um, the last few records we put out, um, we, you know, we were able to tour uh, under those records. It was a lot easier to tour under those records. Uh, these times have been pretty tough um, as far as budgets go and, you know, different things like that with COVID, of course. Aren't you guys tired of COVID? Let's just hope that's um, 
pretty much through. But uh, that's what I've been up to and working and, and uh, with, with these wonderful other players, these newer players, new students. Um, I, I've always loved teaching since the early days of the 80s and uh, probably a little before that. And uh, I'm working with so many of these uh, players that maybe hopefully uh, you, know, you guys can see a few tonight and, just, and, and we can all talk a little bit about that. And uh, that's, that's kind of what I've been up to, music and everything associated with it. Any future, what is SOA? Sons of, what's that? Sons of Apollo. I mean, I'm not in Sons of Apollo, so I don't know if they're going to be doing any more records. I don't know. I'm not the guitar player in that band. But, you know, who knows? But speaking of guys that I've worked with, okay? Um, speaking of guys that I've worked with, like like, like for all these years and, and uh, he's toured with me and, you know, we've done some studying together. He's uh, a terrific player. Um, Bill Lanero. And uh, I'm working with him on his new record. We're pretty much well into the uh, completions of that. And uh, look at this. I think we both <laughs> same size guitars. Same size, but Mike's bigger. Everybody, that's that's, that's, that's the man. Glad That's to be with you, Bill Lanero. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing good, and I'm glad you're keeping my guitar safe back there. This 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 isn't your guitar. No, not that one. The ones behind you. I don't have any guitars behind me. What are you talking about? No, you're right. They're all my guitars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing, what's man? up, Bill? How you how you this, doing? I'm doing good here at the studio. Good to see you. What are you doing there? I'm rehearsing. Well, I will be. I will be rehearsing. You got some shows coming up. We do. We have a show on Sunday. Tell us where the Royal, Royal Rebels uh, downtown San Jose at uh, Sofa Street Fair will be headlining it. Mm. So if you're in San Jose area, San Francisco Bay area, come on out to the Sofa Street Fair. If you send me a car, I can get out there in my you, car. Do you want a twelve? You want you want me to send you what I sent Vinny Moore a twelve passenger stretch limo? Would that that be good? <laughs> I heard that story. <laughs> That's, tell that story. Tell that story. That's too funny. So at the time I used to, I used to work at guitar showcase in San Jose and I used to handle all the clinics and everything. And so, uh, we got Vinny in there and, you know, I was talking to him on the phone and, and he said, uh, well, I've got some requirements. And I said, well, what is that? Because I need a 12 passenger stretch limo. And he was kidding. And I was like, okay. And he goes, no, I'm, I'm only playing. So, um, show time came and, and I had a friend of mine who owned a limo company and I said, Hey, can, can you, we get a 12 passenger limo to go pick up Vinny? He goes, sure. So we drive over to his hotel and knock on the door and he walks out and he was just flabbergasted. He couldn't believe that I actually got him a 12 passenger limo. So fast forward 10 years later. You're still paying for that limo. Yeah, right. No, I was in, I was in Steelheart and we were playing Rock, Oklahoma and we shared our trailer with UFO and Vinny walked in and I knew he wouldn't remember me, but I walked up to him and I said, Hey Vinny, I know you don't remember me. And he goes, Bill, of course I remember you. He goes, you got me a 12 passenger limo because I can never forget that. 10 years later, he remembered my name, which is more than I could say for you. But, you know, come on. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, at the age I'm at, I'm lucky if I remember things that happened 10 minutes ago. Yeah, right. I so, hear you. It's all good, though. It's all good. Yes, yes, yes. And we're working on the new album together, which is fantastic. That new record. And what's the title of that record? And the title of the album is Friends of My Enemies. Yes. Named after me? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just leave it at that. Friends of My Enemies. <laughs> yeah um it's yeah great. it's a great yeah. record um i'm really enjoying the creation of this thing it's uh it's a very organic way that we work yeah and uh Absolutely. we have a lot of uh a lot of fun we have a lot of fun we have a lot of fun and we have a lot of different directions we can go in things and we we kind of uh you know we deal with it by committee right but the only people that are in a committee is just you and i so it's kind of yeah you have a shorter word for that it's called it's called an argument we argue about which direction we're going to go in. So. Or it's called the mafia. So, <laughs> Hey, you're sitting in the right room there. Yes, you got it. You like yeah. ice skating? <laughs> yep. So, yeah. When so, so we a record. When are we looking for that? How, how soon is that going to be? Uh, like I've been telling people, when it's done. That's when it'll be. That's when it's done. And when mm -hmm. it's done, it's done. Mm -hmm. I don't want to rush it. I don't want to, you know, there's no reason to, to put it out before we're 100% happy with it. I was speaking earlier about some of the tours we did together. Oh and yeah. Went, yes. What did we do? Did we done? Was everything in America? Did we do anything in Europe? 
No, but we did Mexico. Oh, okay. Three U.S. tours in Mexico. Yeah. That was amazing. Awesome. Somebody asked me today, said, uh, who was in the chat, actually, said, uh, how did you guys meet? And I said, well, I originally met you in 87, 88 at a guitar show, and you were totally rude in a funny way. But it was, it was your personality, so I, I'm used to it. Um, and then I met you at a guitar clinic later on. And then, uh, you know you're not getting off the hook with me. And then, uh, and then later on at a guitar clinic. And then when we opened for you in San Jose and Oakland, and then you guys asked us to, to tour with you guys. So we did three U.S. tours. To and our blast. ship's grown from that. We don't. We're no longer immature people. We don't talk rudely to each other. No, no, of course not. And 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 you're going to be my best man at my wedding. So that's right. And you're flying everybody that's here, that's in the chat, <laughs> over there as a guest, right? It's one big party. That, that's the big statement you wanted me to make tonight, isn't it? Yes, yeah, that's right. Everybody's invited. On your yeah. Time. Yeah. So. On your dime. Well, listen. Here's what the thing is. The YouTube channel has a lot of cool things on it. What does the YouTube channel have on it that I need to know about? What's so important about the YouTube channel? The YouTube channel that you guys are working on? Yes, sir. So so this came about because my fiance, Shahrazad, I got asked to do a voiceover on this um, kind of uh, uh, meditation style YouTube channel called The Dream Effects. It's thedreameffects.com. Mm -hmm. And then... We pulled you in to do music, to do keyboards and stuff on it. So mm. I don't know if they have your, the one that you did up yet, but it sounds really cool with you and her, her doing the vocals and you doing I, the, the keyboards. Yeah. She's such a wonderful singer. Yeah. And uh, it's such an honor to work with her. She's, she's an immense talent yep. and uh, just, just a natural musician. I mean, you know, you don't, have, you don't really, you can sing charts if you like, you don't have to. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> she's got such perfect pitch and just a, an amazing ability to, you know, to get across what the original goal was. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we, I've, I've done a couple of songs, and I've got two other things that I'm working on uh, right now. Awesome, so. awesome. So if people want to, people want to hear that, then go to thedreameffect.com, and Dream, that'll take them to the YouTube channel. Com. Yeah. Yep. And then yeah. let's see. Dreameffects.com. Yeah. Yep. And let's see what else. Uh, I got my strap tight strap locks. That company? That, I never got mine. I'd like to speak to the president of that because I, uh, I sent well, out, um, like a pair of those for my guitars. I never received them. Is this where I um, voice the complaints? This is where you do the complaints, but I'm pretty sure that the president told you about it. And you said, well, I use these little things that clip on. You know, they look like dinner plates at a hotel. <laughs> you know, so it's just oh, like, great. I don't know what that's all about. But I love that. Yeah, I, so yeah. Uh, yeah. straptight.com. Strap that's the... That's the website. Joe Satriani uses them. He loves them. Glenn Hughes uses them. Andy Timmons uses them, but not Tony McAlpine. Oh, you're kind of overloading the boat now. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> hey, take it easy there, killer. We, we, we got all kinds of play. This guitar would have them on there, but, you know, it, it doesn't. But, uh, yeah. So so what am I, I going to figure out when I'm coming back there to work more on the album and, and all that fun stuff? What, well, we have some higher up people here that run the, run the show. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of, you know. Got to work it out through them. And, uh, you know, if he says you can come down, then you can come down. Well, hopefully next well, time. Far said you can come down. Hopefully next time I'll come down, I get a little more than a hamburger or a hot dog. <laughs> Eat some of those, you know, steaks and pork chops you guys got going on there. Yeah, those crazy pictures we see, huh? Yeah. yeah well, you're always sending me dinner pictures. You know, and they, they eat a lot down here. I don't really get mm -hmm. much. Can't you tell by the size of my arms? Oh, I can see those guns. Everybody can see those guns. Yeah, easy now. It's like a howitzer. Whose guitars are in the background there? Those are all yours? Mine. Wow. Yeah. How many great. guitars do you own? Uh, I don't know, like 20, something like that. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So my, little, my little studio here. Yeah. No well, so, It's been an honor talking with you. I thank you very much. You for too. I know you're having me. Stuff going with the rehearsal. Don't forget thank about you for having me. I'm going to come up on stage and jam with you on. That yeah, well, you're doing it's uh, right. It's in the key of four. Key, that's right, exactly. Yes. Well, that. everybody listening, Tony's doing keyboards on my new album and playing bass. So, love you, Bill. Love Thank you too, you man. For joining, man. Thanks for having me. All right, have a good All rehearsal. Right. Have a Talk great day. Right. Cheers. Bye. Bill Lanero, that's that's a great guy. He's a great player. Very original musician. And uh, which way is this thing going? Am I am I reading from down here, or am I going from? 
Uh, so, so I'm good here. Here, I'll let you do it because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Got you. Cause I kept moving it. Why does it keep moving? <laughs> Oklahoma city. How you doing, Muhammad? And here is uh, what do we got? Glenn Edwards. Thank you, brother. Yes. Guitar books, John Dolch. Guitar books, I don't know. Um, I get different offers about different things to do. Consequently, I never really know, uh, know how that's going to work, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. If I could get into uh, transcribing my own stuff and knowing that it was pretty accurate, I probably would do it. But uh, there's some good people out there that know what they're doing. Um. Juan Pablo Mendez says, I loved your work with the band McAlpine, the record Eyes of the World, 1990. I always watched the videos of that of those concerts. Yeah, yeah, that those were some fun concerts. We had David Van Landingham with a great singer. God bless him. You know, he was he was killed in an accident, but uh, you know, it's a great part of history um for me. It was a cool thing. That was like in the beginning of the polygram days. So uh for us. So we really loved it and um Um, you know what? I'm going to, that kind of question came up before and I'm going to start a little link that I think we're probably going to, um, you know, get it rolling on, on, um, you know, on social media and I'm going to lead into, uh, talking about things like that, you know, about bands I like, and, um, I don't know. Cause I like so many of them, you know, I really do. So you never know, but talking about legendary bands, I got my good friend, uh, great player, one of the best, one of the best that you you know you'll find, and uh, Herman Lee. And Herman oh. Herman Lee is look is, at look at look at those look at those. Don't tell me, don't tell me, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Hey, let's hey, let's let's throw down a few down a few. I mean, can I can I can I borrow nine nine? I broke I broke into a guitar shop to do this. You know, there's a there's like a SUV turnover smashed up a block away. Took the power out of my house. So I have to you know that, break into a guitar that, shop. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, work, work. yeah. I see, I see. Power, power. You have, you have. You basically, you basically power back on, power back on. Yeah, it's back on. Thanks for fixing it, Tony. Yep. Saw so you up the yep. roof there. It was you. That it was did, you. That did. How you been? How you been? Working on these. Working days. on these days. I've been good. Um, I've been sick for three weeks, actually. So I sound a little bit like Rod Stewart at the moment. So don't get too excited for my sexiness, you know. We will if you start. But, but, uh, uh, yeah. What have you been doing? What have you been doing? Um, I have to make an album. I have to go on tour. So um, pretty much getting ready to do some of that. You know, every time I have to make an album, I kind of, it scares me because it's like, well, what am I going to do this time? You know, and they're going to say it's the same, even though it's not. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, but you, you, know what? you know what? You don't have to worry, don't have to worry about this. Uh, you uh, are uh, kind of legendary. legendary. And, uh, and uh, you, are, you are what you make what it. You make it. Know what it's know gonna, what it's going to be even comes out. Comes out. And the truth, the truth, the truth, music. That sets you, that sets you apart. Announce, announce. I mean, I don't know. I'll ask you, actually, because my problem is every time I make an album, it's like, well, I already done how many guitar solos on an album. Now I'm expecting to do another 30 on the next album. How, what do you do to make sure you don't feel like, oh man, I've done this before. Oh, I've done that before. What, what's your plan if you have to do that? Well, I get the problem, I get the problem with the mini band. Mini band. Well, you know, I, know I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the Planet X experience. All the styles are very different. For me, that's a you know legitimate answer with why I felt like I had to take so much time off in the early days uh, to build up, the, you know, the language of maybe telling a different story as far as it went instrumentally, because I felt like I did so much stuff um, that was coming out naturally. And then when I, you know, met Derek and Virgil, uh, the Planet X thing seemed like a natural way to go for a while. And, uh, you know, we did that. And then, uh, you know, venturing into the cab stuff and, you know, back and forth, different things, jamming with Steve and, you know, what a wonderful guy and, a, you know, a legendary player. I, I just like doing as many things as possible. Uh, 
but I know it's not, that's not always the case. People can't always do that. You know, they have to do, right. They have to do maybe one or two different things, but Hey, we could do something different. If you, you know, you need to recharge your batteries. We could come out with a record. What do you think about that? I'm totally into it, man. You know, if yeah, you, yeah. I'm up to doing one. Why not? It's actually easier because I haven't done something in that, in a different genre, you yes, know, recording yes. seriously. I've done like stuff for projects and it's actually easier because you can actually do something that you've done before on something else. Yes, yes. Well, I, I, well, I, I, I read in, 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 in cap. So I know that you are fearless and you could play anything and, and, uh, you know, we all know what you're all about. So, uh, that would be a lot of fun to do to work on something with you and come out with it. You know, Hey, wouldn't that be great? A record with Herman. You know, even a few songs, a few videos, you know, it'd be kind of, it'd be kind of cool. All right. Um, All right. Yeah. These days you don't need to release 10 songs, you know. But you're not talking about singing, right? <laughs> no, no, we don't want singers. Don't want to deal with that situation. Singers. <laughs> oh my God. You're very funny. When's the last time we jammed together? We jammed on a Twitch thing, I think. That's what we did. Yeah, that was when you came over here. This room wasn't even ready. It was completely, it wasn't even done up. So it we were the. Back. I took a look at it and I said, you know, this doesn't meet my expectations. I'm gonna need you to change it a little bit. But I, you've done a great job with, with my vision. I like. Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was it was a wow. I don't even remember, but I had lots of fun, and I, I think for the for the for the people watching here, they don't know. I'm a big fan since i was like i don't know 17 or something wow so i used to sit there and learn stuff of maximum security and <sighs> them to fly evolution really you yeah play them terribly I yeah it hey, says i should sing on the record what do <laughs> you think you need a soprano for this stuff <laughs> <laughs> what do you think <laughs> nah I think you need a real man's voice. The only time I sound really good is when I don't sleep and I go to bed at about 3 a.m. I wake up in the morning, I have a really deep voice. Otherwise, it just gets up in there, you know, and the, the tweeters. I don't, <laughs> don't have that, that, that deep voice. I kind of wish I did. We always want something that we don't have. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, it would be cool to sing, you know, at least you can be popular for once instead of just you know you respect it for like a few minutes <laughs> yeah it's true uh, that's true um what else yeah. are you doing what else are you doing yeah i, I mean doing? i got i actually got a child running around the house it's kind of funny screaming um now the last time i was over i didn't did i see the kids no it was too late she was sleeping and quiet these days she's not quiet she's like an insane animal running around how, how old is she Three years old. Already showing a sign of uh, an interest in music? Uh, yeah. You know what? What was funny? So I told you about that SUV that crashed down the road. So I just picked her up earlier and I said to her, you know, we're going to look at this car accident. Someone wasn't being careful with driving. And she goes, who? Uncle Tosin? <sighs> She's thinking Tosin the Bassy. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my god. No, it's not Tosin. No. No, it's not. Well, that's amazing. She's a smart girl. She's gonna I be know. Soon. You're I gonna know. Be, uh, happy with giving her the keys to the mom's car there? Yeah. Uh, key to the Lamborghini, right? The Lamborghini. I think it's gonna be a, probably an electric car by the time she gets her license. Yeah, hopefully none of none of us have to drive by then. Yeah, gas will be uh, like a forgotten thing. It'd be like the horse and buggy by the time she's driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the age she's at. Come on. You can't, you can't get your license until you're like 16 or 17 these days, right? I I, I don't know. I, I think that's what it is. I mean, I was trying driving probably illegally when I was 12. So but, but you you're like a motor, you're like a crazy a motorcycle guy. Yeah, my uh, like Hayabusa's. Here's a, a little model. Of, uh, this is I, I actually had uh this model in a, in uh you do? Yeah, this model, this paint job, but uh, yeah, I, I, I like Suzuki bikes and um, Hayabusa's and I'm not like a speed nut, but you know, I like traveling with the two wheels every now and then. I drive cars too, but you know, I, I enjoy the outdoors. 
That's, I, mean, I think motorcycle is way scarier than driving a sports car or anything. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll take you on a ride on the back of the bike. You know, you ride the bike. I'm on the back of the bike. Yeah. And then I'm going to go for a ride with you in the car. You one of your sports cars. And I'm going to drive the car and you sit in the passenger side. Can we do that? We can do that. Why not? That's done. That's done. Happen. Deal. That's <laughs> totally going to happen. So look at what's your favorite guitar back there? That's what I want to know. I always wanted to ask you that question. If you were going to point it out, which would it be? Uh, I don't know, actually. All my, all my cool, my favorite one, the one, you know, with sentimental value that I have are back in England where I still have my stuff there. But I have one cool one. Actually, I'm going to show you. Okay. People, people get a buzz out of this. Show me that. So trying to outvie Steve oh, Vai, right? Color. So this is usual stuff. Hmm. Okay. We've seen this before. You've seen this on stage of Steve, but yeah. Steve doesn't have this. Oh my gosh. You know, whatever you touch. That's awesome. I love so, that. That's the that's the that's the party trick for the show, you know, at one of one or two songs. You can put that on my acoustic guitar. <laughs> you put it on your piano. No, that's another thing. I'd have to wear some kind of like diversion of light <laughs> on those white keys. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And um, how involved is that like to, to do? Is that is that something that's... I mean, how does it run? By batteries? Do you charge the thing? Or what, how does it work? Yeah, it's got a battery at the back. You basically have to steam the fretboard out of the oh, I see. neck, put oh. the electronics in, glue the fretboard back in, uh. and you know, obviously install the lights before you do that. And someone did it for me in Orange County, actually. Oh, so uh, your guitar company didn't do that? No, Ibanez couldn't do that. Oh, hey, shh. You know, right. They'll kill me. Hey, they go, you want you want what? No. <laughs> to listening. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, how, how high do you go with the extended guitars and the smallest guitar? And what's your, you're doing, are you doing the eight string things and, and nine string guitars and 10 string guitars? I met this guy on the road at a 10 string guitar. I'm like, dude, come on. That's incredible. So, <laughs> Well, well, I can barely play six, but I do have the Tosin Abassi's eight string here that I play around just, you know, just like a playing at home thing, not really to make on an album. Yeah. You know? Wow. That's amazing. That's a, that's a beautiful guitar though. How many, and how many guitars do you have, have that, that feature with the lights? Just, just one at the moment. I'm going to have another one made, you know, just. When Make you, it cool. I always crazy. ask players this, but I, I kind of do. But I'm going to ask you, put you right on that line. When you are recording like some of your favorite stuff and stuff that you did, do you have a guitar that you actually go to that you've used on more than one record that's like kind of like your go-to guitar? Or, or, or how do you feel about that? Yeah, I use my main stage guitars for recording because um, <clears throat> it's the best sounding, it's the best feel of it. You know, I'm not really like, I don't use different guitars in the studio. I use the same one I use on stage. Same gear, wow. same everything. Why figure it out a new thing? You're supposed to figure it out for the stage, right? So optimize the stage performance instrument and use that on the recording too. That's kind of my idea. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, awesome. that's, 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 that's a good approach. That's, yeah, I kind of like some of the original things that I've used. They make me a lot of cool projects, uh, you know, guitars and test this, you know, neck test this body but i kind of have this thing with guitar i think i told you this when i jammed with you about how guitars feel when they're worn in mm -hmm. a certain thing when it's brand new uh, for me it just takes a, a while for that guitar to be something that's like part of me and yeah absolutely. you know when you get a new guitar it's kind of hard for you to get away from that new guitar and 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 you know what I mean? And, and, and as an, an inverse thing to playing the, the used one, the, the, you know, the one that's like worn in and it's got the worn away, uh, you know, frets and all that other stuff. That's all part of the sound for me. I like, I, I agree. It sounds better. I like old used up beat up guitars. There's something about the tone. It's a bit warmer. It's a bit yeah. more pleasant. Indeed. It vibrates more. Indeed. But new guitars are just like, 
it doesn't really move too much. It's just kind of like that, like worn out strings though. That's the only thing I can't do. I'm I'm like a day after that day, we gotta change the strings. I like them kind of as new as possible. Are you oh, yeah. okay? or are you like worn out strings? No, I, I like new strings. I've seen I had players that come here. I, I thought, oh my god, well, these strings are from the 80s. How the how do you guys even play these things? They're black, they're like got scum stuck to it. Isn't that There's the strange? players? I know they're so good on the guitar because they don't spend their time changing strings ever. They just don't. I do. I, I just don't like people changing the strings. I still don't. I like doing it myself. I, I just, yeah. I, there's a there's a word for that, but I won't use it here. But you know, I'm that guy. I'm very controlling what the way I just, it, and it's not that big of a deal. I just like to do it a certain way, you know? Uh -oh. Oh, I'm, I've got tools all over my table. Oh, look at that. You too. Yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah. You show me do it myself. You know, if you don't know how to change your own strings, you don't know how to set up your guitar, then you don't know how a guitar should play, you know? Yeah. If you like. Yeah. Hey, through all the stuff that's been going on, this crazy thing, like, you know, the COVID experiences and all that, have you been writing? Is that, is that made you creative or added to your creativity? Or how do you, how do you, because, you know, people ask me all the time, uh, how is this thing treating you? You can't like tour as much as you could or the way you did. And we certainly can't, you know, the, the price of fuel, you know, to be in those vehicles and all other stuff. But did you did you find it as a source of creativity for yourself? Yes, because I felt like it pulled the brakes and slowed the world down and gave us a chance to think. You know, instead of everyone have to go a million miles per hour trying to make money or do things or being late, being da da, you got the schedule. It's like, all right, can we just turn back the clock and go back before the computer existed? You can't do sh much and just slow down. I I like the the pace that slowed down. Actually, it actually helped me catch up with a lot of things i couldn't do when the you know everything was in motion touring you make an album you have to do promo you gotta do this it's like oh my god why i thought i'm just here to enjoy doing music i'm not a slave of my own creation i hope you know absolutely i mean well that's uh i mean that's uh, you have a way of being creative that most people don't have uh that translates into that being their lifestyle and that's how i look at it too i look at it like uh a lot of people love music and um but when that's your profession it's a different thing right at the same time you know you and i talked about it. it's your job right so you you know you, you you can't say that oh i don't really feel good tonight i you know what i mean i, I can't go to work because i you know my arms hurting or you know you've got to put on the same show uh you know and and kind of keep it as a standard and i think that goes and works its way into the the way that creativity serves us I mean, you know, you 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 want each of the records that you do or that you're involved with, whatever, whatever musicians they are, whoever they are, you want it to be your highest level. And um, but you know, hey, we're human, right? Sometimes you know you get involved in something and it's just like not quite doesn't really come out. And I know you've experienced that. We talk about the, these things, you know, it doesn't come out like quite the way that you know you you thought you thought it would. But you go out and you play live, and doesn't it come together? I think that that's the one thing I missed through all of the COVID stuff and all that is like, I was always, I was on the road so much that I forgot, you know, about kind of what it was like to be home. I was like always playing and mm -hmm. living off of that energy of, of, of playing live. And, and, uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful experience. And, and that's what I try to give to, um, you know, many musicians that I work with that don't have that same thing going on. It's not a regular nine to five thing. You know, mm -hmm. but it's a beautiful thing when you can translate that into music and certainly translate that and, and pin it out and write music that you think people are going to really experience and get them through uh, these kind of things. Because we have a lot of dark times in this world, don't we? Isn't it, isn't it crazy that, you know, the, all the different elements that we, that we, we deal with in, in this life and we're spo still supposed to be like pleased and happy and, you know. I know. You know, I th I think um kind of a weird thing to say. I mean, I don't really like to get deep into it, but I felt like no, let's you know, like, deep, 20, yeah, let's just jump in. Twenty years ago, I felt like the world was supposed to get better, you know, in a good direction. But it seems like the direction have changed again, and going backwards in a certain way, things getting worse, you know, for for people out there. So mm -hmm. um, definitely um, strange. It's always a pleasure to see you, man. It really is. Uh, and, 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 you know, I got to make my way down there. I'll, I'm going to, I'll ride the bike down and, and uh, come out and uh, take you for a ride and get you a helmet. We can go to Walmart and get those little cheap plastic helmets on and uh, 
cruise on <laughs> Sunset Boulevard or something. <laughs> You're not into it. You're not into it. <laughs> yeah, he's not into it. Thank you so much, Tony. Of course, you know, a pleasure talking to you. You know, always love what you do. Everything musically. Love super you, Love you, brother. Respect everything you do, man. Love it. So thank you for coming right. in. Good luck with everything. And uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get together and do something soon. I mean, we gotta do that. Why not? Let's just have a little fun while we're here. I'm game. I'm totally out for it. All right. It's good. All right. Say hello to the family. Peace and love, bro. Thank you. Cameron Lee, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take a look at the Everything that's coming here and hi from Las Vegas. Hey, Brett. Greetings from Brazil. How are y'all? How y'all doing? You doing all right? Y'all are doing all right. Ring of Fire was was one of my favorite bands. Nobody plays the guitar and keyboards at that level. Oh, come on. People do. People do. People do. Yes. Look at this stuff. This is really great. I love how these um you guys talk about such unique things and Hey, like I said, John. John Dolch, we should do this more often. I think uh, you know, this will be our little experiment. We can find out uh kind of what what works and what makes people feel good about certain things. Um and then uh, who knows, you know, maybe we can make it some kind of universal jam session. That's always fun too, jamming over things like I could write some stuff and not tell people what key it's in. I won't tell them it's in the key of four. And then they got to play. They're going to wonder, what the heck is the key of four? Aren't they, Marissa? They're going to wonder, what the heck is the key of four? I don't even know what the key of four is. What is this one? Can you read this one, Marissa? What, what, what is... Uh... Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I got it. Thank you, Elias. It's just so far away. It's It's hard for me to see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. So that was a lot of fun talking to Herman. Yeah, how are y'all guys doing back there? Is Mark still alive? Is he awake? Oh, I see him. I see a hand. There's a hand waving in the dark. Do I still have the diamond guitar? That's a good question. No, it was sold some years ago to a wonderful uh, friend and a wonderful player, Rich Bierman. And um, I don't know what's become of that guitar. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a BC Rich guitar, I believe. Uh, really cool guitar. Really cool paint job. Um, not uh, in possession of that anymore. Um, not uh, not anymore. And uh, what, what else do we got there? Uh... Oh. Uh, that's a nice. Eves Rivard. Fantastic neoclassical shredder. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I get a lot of questions. Mike is asking me a question about what is the writing process on the new record and, and how the tunes come together. I write like all of the material um, by myself on keyboards. I've always written on keyboards first. And uh, then I try to, I, I try to put the, the rest of the things together. Whether or not I'm successful or not, that's what the, you know, the tracks are all about. Uh, and I approach it that way. Uh, uh, keyboards was my first instrument. Uh, so it's important for me to be able to um, approach my songwriting in that that direction. And it's a percussive instrument. I can understand the rhythms that I'm dealing with. Um, I don't really have to uh, work with any machines or anything. I can pretty much, you know, create it that way. So that that's uh, the whole process in terms of of writing those 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 things and doing it that way. Um, uh, the, the cab record was written really pretty much the same way the new cab record. And I think we're pretty close to, um, deciding what tracks we're going to use. We, we wrote something like 15, 16 songs to get to the songs that we have now. So we'll see how that goes uh, and see, uh, you know, when you write something, you take some time away from it. It's pretty, pretty amazing what it makes you feel like when you spend some time away and listen to different things and you come back, you have a different experience of what you think that song was all about and what it makes you feel like at the moment. So, um, yeah, that's a cool question. That's how the process is done. 
for me, that's how we uh, that's how we write these things. Um, how do I make this go up and down? This this doesn't do that, huh? Oh, oh, I see. Thank you. Hey, Danny from Austin. Danny. Hey, by the way, Mike Pishka from uh, from from the Corfu Rock School. Thank you for that question about uh, how I put these songs together. I love you, Mike. I got to see you soon. We got to get those motorcycles together. Danny. Danny from Austin. You ever talk to George Lunch? I just, I just um, did a thing not too long ago at the Paul Gilbert camp with George Lunch. We played Tears of Sahara together for the first time live. And uh, that was fun. That was an experience. Um, George is a great guy and one of the most unique players that we've uh, ever been uh, so lucky to have here. So that was, uh, yeah, that was an amazing time. Uh, yeah, George is cool. George is unique. One of the most. Hey, look, Marshall Owens says, get on Eddie Trunk's show. We'd love to hear what you've been up to. Yeah, I know. I was on that show like a lot of years ago. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to. I, you know, did the, a Monsters of Rock cruise and another cruise, a progressive cruise. And and I've seen, um, you know, Eddie in one of those cruises. And it's pretty amazing. Um, the commitment and the, and the joy that he has of being involved with, the, you know, the music that way. So listen, we're going to now... Um, we're going to talk to a wonderful friend of mine who's a, a, a student and composer and, and is working on material. Um, and his name is Cyril. Hello. How are you, Cyril? I'm doing great, Tony. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Oh, no, not you, too. Everybody's got a miniature guitar. What, how, you know what? what? I only have one. <laughs> I get two. Oh boy, look at that guitar collection. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm hanging in there. I'm I'm enjoying this uh this this phone situation, this community. Everybody gets together and talks about what they're feeling. What are you feeling these days? You you tell me. I've had the pleasure of working with him uh on his music and developing what he's doing as a player. Uh he came to me with some some aspirations, some goals that he wanted to achieve and and uh, he's embraced us, and, and his playing has just uh, changed immensely, as did uh, a lot of players that I've worked with. And, and uh, tell us a little bit about what your experience has been like. And yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think a ton of, of players actually can relate to my experience. So, you know, I was, I was 15 when I grabbed the guitar. Um, a friend was into metal. Um, you know, I listened to Metallica, Guns N' Roses, ACDC. And I grabbed the guitar, I did covers for a while, you know, for about three to four years. And then life got busy. And then I got old. And then uh, in 2009, actually, when Les Paul died, that kind of reignited the flame, you know, for me. Yes. I grabbed the guitar again, and I started noodling for, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe five, six years on and off, trying to you know, find stuff on the internet to learn. And I think I ended up in the, the loop that a lot of us get in um, to a point where, you know, one day uh, someone I know actually told me that uh, Tim, I gave lessons and I thought there's no way, you know, a guitar hero, guitar god actually would get close to me. <laughs> I tried my luck and here we are. It's been six months, you know, I've been with you um, opening new doors to new worlds pretty much every week, you know, like going into things that I, I never thought I'd be able to do. You know, seeing myself on a video, obviously not in front of you, because it can be super intimidating to, you know, dial in and go, okay, um, I have to deliver. But it's also a huge drive. And, you know, I think, I mean, you've seen it more than I see myself, you know, on your side that I've progressed over the last six months. You haven't seen the last 10 years. Uh, so you can't really tell right now that, you know, the last six months for me have been uh, a much bigger adventure than a long time before that. One thing that's to me interesting also in all the comments I see is that everybody's harping on about, you know, how good you play the guitar or the piano, um, how incredible your music is. And I don't think a lot of them know you're even a better teacher than you are a player. And so that's the thing that to me, you know, I think is going to stick with me for the next couple of decades is that, you know, <laughs> 
you can play really, really well the guitar, but it's really hard. It's even harder to teach. And uh, I really like what you do. So thank you. Well, I, I, I really appreciate you saying that because, you know, the approach is uh, the approach is that the, the experiences that you going through uh, are going through as a player are not unique only to you. Every musician goes through that at one time or another. And, 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 and so there, there has to be a method of knowing that that the results uh, can only be achieved by by the same system. And that's I always tell you that I, you know it's it, it seems like a method of madness, but it's not. <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah. what it is. It's all about keeping the interest level where it should be and the and the growth of it all. Mm -hmm. You are have a commitment. You have a you know a wonderful family. You know, um, you you you're busy with that. You have a wonderful job, and and yet you still find time to to do um, mm -hmm. to things that you know uh, you know are, are important and and are are fun for you artistically. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's really like a, I don't know, microcosm of what kind of what you go through as a player on, on when you're touring. I mean, you, you go on stage for what, an hour, but yet you drive for 800 miles <laughs> to get to that, like, you know, that one show that play for that little bit of time and then, you know, not eat so well, unless you know, you know, some friends in, in the towns you go to that feed you well. So it's, it's, it's all, it's all part of the same. And, uh, but um, congratulations to you for the for the commitment that you've shown and the growth that you've experienced. And I can't wait to, you know, so you and I are working on the ideas of what composition are all about. And um, I can't wait to, for you to actually get a really nice size catalog of, of material that, you know, that you can, you know, revert back to and go, this is some of my favorite stuff. That's some of my favorite stuff. Well, sure. how, do we, how do we get into, um, you know, the studio and make that happen? And we're, you know, and that's obviously our goal with working with, you know, you and many of the other, you know, players that we work with is to develop them to that point where they have an understanding and an interest much higher than they did when they started, that they can still do many different things in life. So we, are, we also go through a ton of very interesting tunes, I feel. Things that I think I would have never listened on my own if, you know, if you didn't go on Saturday morning just listen to that for a week, try and figure it out. Here's, here's the sheet music. Tell me where it's going to be played on the neck and why, you know, and then obviously fail and go again through it. But things that really open your mind to new, you know, like um, watching birds, for example, was, was a huge one for me. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, listening to violin and the way the phrasing is behind that. Yes. And what you can bring into the guitar. So yes. I think that's all super interesting for everybody. Yes. So you've, you've done amazing stuff with... Um... With uh, Jean-Luc Ponty's, um, you know, you know the renditions that we've created, so that you could study that. He's he's a, he's a great violinist, and you know his contributions to uh, to to music are are, are 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 timeless and endless. You know, I mean, the early days of you know Frank Zappa and, and uh, all the things that he's done, and his early records. Uh, you know, and his the people that have con uh, worked with him and, and contributed to you know to his. Um, is playing George Benson, Alan Holzer, or Daryl Starmer, you know, just goes to, it goes, it just goes down the line. You know, Steve Smith, who I was lucky enough to have uh, to, to work with on my very first record, um, Edge of Insanity, that that was put out by Shrapnel and Mike Varney and you know in the early days. And and uh, uh, you know, those kind of things are just kind of a, a circle of life. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, uh, I have a love for so many different styles of music, and I always try to make sure that the players uh, and then that's what I consider everybody a player. Uh, the players that I work with uh, can appreciate, embrace that, you know, and know that mm -hmm. this might not be your favorite style of music. You know, if we start learning this style and you're into that style and then there's that style and this style, but it's just check this out and give it the dedication and the care. Uh, mm -hmm. that and that's what music is really all about. Mm -hmm. And you've done such a great, great job with that. It's good to see you. I, uh, I, I'm hoping that I'm um, still invited to the barbecue. Am I invited to the barbecue? Yeah. Yes. 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 And tell everybody what what where what country? Where are you from? Okay, so I was I was born in France. I think everybody's you know worked that out already with the accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got an interesting family too, and you know I've got a thing for languages. Obviously, I speak Japanese at home with my wife. My daughter was born in Australia. You can see my Australian citizenship document right here. <laughs> 
um, <laughs> but we live in yeah. Orange County. So if uh, Herman would like to share, you know, the name of of that guy who put all the LEDs, I'd, I'd love to meet the guy. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Zero, it's so good to see you, brother. Thank you for having me. Love you very much. Love I'll see you, you soon too. in the next session we have. Thank all right. You. Cheers. Take yeah. care. All right. Wow. Um, jolly, jolly times. Jolly times. What a great, great player he is. He's a wonderful player. Um, how is everybody doing there? Greenland. Where's Greenland? Where is that? Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Yes, uh, open your mind to music. Take in all the world has to offer. Thanks, Mike James. You're right. Yes, there's some great messages popping in, and now, uh, you know, we're thinking about um, we're thinking about you guys are meeting some of the cool players. Uh, you know, they're popping up on your screen. And that's a that's a beautiful thing. Uh, some of these players uh, have so many different um, you know, contributions that they're making as players, and their styles are very different. That's the one of the things that's very important. That I'd like so many different styles, and I think that's an important element, uh, at least in the time that we live, because so many things are so accessible, like instantaneously. You can you can listen to something and and be influenced by what you hear. But the most important thing is. Um, listening to the things that you hear and feel inside. I, I think that's very important. Uh, I have another player that I work with uh, very closely. Um, Justin, Justin Cates is... Uh, I am here. Can you hear me? Oh, oh, we always hear you, dude. I don't know. What do you have for uh, a microphone? Like a Marshall microphone <laughs> or a Houston Kettner powered microphone? What do you got? It just comes... I'm a, yeah. Yeah. Studio yeah. Projects B1, but I just have a very powerful voice. That's all. The amazing thing about you <laughs> is that um, you play. It's funny. We talked about this, right? The left hand or the right hand. It's like, but I don't know. It's not the same as the hand that I hold. <laughs> but it's amazing sometimes, right, when we get together and we talk about things. And, you know, he'll be, um, he's been studying for a while with me and, and tell us a little bit about yourself, and we'll get, we'll circle back to the differences of who's holding the neck the proper way. Because I'm trying to <laughs> hold it in my direction. <laughs> I'll just start using my wife's guitar. Hers is a righty. It's pink. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I'm, be proud. Be proud. That's right. Be proud and be brave. Right. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I. I. Uh, no. I got started playing guitar probably when I was 19. I'm a late bloomer. And it was kind of interesting because when I really got interested in the instrument, I was in sitting in high school and the teacher had like these nylon string guitars and they were just like student level Yamaha things. And I started doing tricks on a guitar automatically. I get just, I bonded with it. And um, teachers, I started doing things and the kids are like, What's he doing? You know, and so the teacher's like, "Okay, Elvis Presley, knock it off," you know, because I'm from New York, you know, so everyone's a little, little on edge, you know. But it was like she's like calling me Elvis Presley and stuff, and I be got I became friends with this kid. Um, well, then we were kids, um, and uh, he showed me how to like alternate pick and play power chords. I didn't know what a power chord was, and so I had already been playing trumpet, and I could, you know, read sheet music and sight read on that level, single notes, yeah. not really chords or anything, but right. Um, I just uh, my sister listened to a lot of Van Halen and ZZ Top, you know, all the greats, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't until probably I heard, yeah, I had a couple of Van Halen live albums, but then I heard Ingve Malmsteen, mm -hmm. and I was like, this guy's over the top. This guy is like, you know, on the verge of playing too much. Yeah. And I was like, then I started listening to some other bands like Planet X. And then I heard you play on there. And I was like, this is a guy that can, he plays appropriately, you know, for what the music calls for. And I was drawn to that. And 
So I had the first Planet X Universe album. Then I got, um, I bought uh, the second album that you did. And I can't remember that one is, that one is Maximum Security, isn't it? The, the second solo record I did was Maximum Security. That's the one, because it has like it has Autumn Lords and everything like that. Yeah. And it's, it's great. So when I heard that, I was like, here's, it really, I had to go back in your catalog. And then I came back, and it was just amazing how you were able to, you know, do the style of Planet X like you were talking about earlier. You know, it's it's a little, it's far different, you know. Yeah. And so I, that kind of just set me on the track to, you know, where, where I'm at now. And I've played with a lot of different groups like around locally and and it was kind of funny because i kind of stopped playing for a while because that's about he, when you and i kind of uh you know met and hooked up and talked and, and yeah a, a friend of mine said you were doing lessons i'm like ah, i'm not i don't know i i don't know if they're actually going to ask me if i send something in. i'm like fine i'll send it in you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. and then i was like couldn't believe it and so i was like ever since then i was back on the instrument and yeah. um i kind of polish off those old sight reading skills and understanding time isn't, signatures and isn't guitar such a, an amazing thing though isn't it uh in a way that it's such a it's such a universal instrument you know when you think about it you know you pick it up yeah. you know and you you know you play it and then you you have these different styles that uh, uh that you admire that other players have as you mentioned eddie van halen and you know, and 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 you think that uh, it, 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 it's crazy how you can just learn a lick and play that lick, and, and oh, yeah. it encourages to you to do something. That's that was like the you know the start for me too, listening to such great stuff early on, and um, I loved it. I I I I started with 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 piano, and and my parents didn't really want me using my ear too much to you know because those piano lessons were expensive, so they wanted me to <laughs> be playing that. But you know, I would sneak and find times for that. But you know, I it, I, I say that because you mentioned you, you started with the horn, right? Oh that yeah. Your that was your 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 first thing. And do you you still play that horn? You tell me occasionally, right? I'm getting back into it, and my my kids actually got me like, hey, you need to play the trumpet again. So, yeah. um, they're encouraging me, and uh, yeah. I have that instrument to thank for being you know, to, yeah, because I so I can read music because of it. So yeah. And now um, I get into playing piano stuff. So you're playing keyboards now too, and everything. And yeah, yeah, that's you know, it's funny because I've always wanted to play that instrument, but I was like, I don't know if I want to get into that because I'm doing guitar, and and now obviously you've shown me the light as far as the, you know, really the genesis of compositions really on the on the piano. I mean, there's a there's there's just a depth and a tonality of that instrument that really you can't get on it on a guitar it's the richness of the notes and yeah it's just it's a fascinating instrument i mean it's you know it's it's, it's just a row of keys but there's something about it where there's so much more dimension there you know well the, you know the one difference being you play that note and that note's gone and you really can't control what happens with that note unless it's a short note right or it continues right. yeah uh, that's that's really the difference of it you know with guitar right you play it, you're always holding on to that note, but you can mm. add vibrato to that note. There's no vibrato with the, you know, with the, with the piano, right? Oh, and, yeah. And so it's very percussive, so timing is very important. And uh, yeah. And 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 uh, you're looking great, man. It's like I saw you not too long ago, but you're looking happy, and uh, which which is uh, it's, <laughs> right. It's an important look for a musician, isn't it? Looking happy. <laughs> yes, yes, you have to. Who wants right. to buy the album of everyone scowling? Like, what's their problem? You know? No, that used to be the marketing image. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you're like grunge era. I'm, 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 <laughs> thank you for for joining in and talking with us and 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 uh, coming in and saying hello and uh, uh, we really appreciate that, Justin. Um, no feelings mutual. I this uh, is an honor. I appreciate it. All right, brother. I, I'll, I'll see you down the road shortly, huh? Yeah? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Take care. Cheers. Cheers. And now, when does the pizza come? When do we get the pizza? Mark, are we getting the pizza? I think you said something about a pizza, right? Sure. Well, he doesn't sound that convincing. Uh, I, I, uh, are we really getting a pizza? We can. Yeah. Uh, we can? I thought it was, like, coming. No, we don't need a pizza. I am totally kidding. And he's going to say, I told you that you, know, you thought you were serious. Look at that.
I love that. Um, how's everybody doing? You guys enjoying meeting all these people and talking with them? I think these people are, it's just like the epitome of energy. Scott, how you doing, brother? I've got to send you the Brahms. Okay, I'm going to first do that right away. We're going to send you the Brahms. And um, we're going to meet and talk to TQ. He's one of the most interesting and amazing players uh, that I've had the pleasure of um, working with and then kind of guiding. And uh, very unique player. Um, Tim is uh, one heck of a unique composer uh I do. and i'm a huge fan of you sir how are you doing sir i'm good man i appreciate that yes and he's uh marissa you know that contribute like to uh, the sanctity and the peace of our country so um and uh say uh involved in music in such a deep way um let's talk about that let's talk about how your love for music started how did you get into music and how did we meet you don't have to tell me uh, the consequences of what the conversation was like with me when you met me but <laughs> you could, you could yeah. be nice and avoid that <laughs> okay. um but yeah uh i mean music started my love for music started like at a very early age um a lot has to do with my father was a huge influence. Uh, he played the piano and uh, he was one of those guys who had like that wooden shelf with all, like, you know, the speakers and the equalizers and a, and a wall of CDs and records. And mm -hmm. so, uh, I had a pretty vast, you know, uh, musical palette, you know, mm -hmm. that I was influenced by. Um, but surprisingly, I started on drums before I ever picked up guitar. And then um, from there, I went to bass and then eventually to guitar. And, well, uh, it was something about the thicker strings, you know, and playing bass and then picking up the guitar. I was like, that. Ah, this seems a lot easier. Well, but then when, when when you get like, you know, deeper into guitar, you start to realize like, oh, you know, there's a lot more to this. There really is, right? Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, um, yeah, I was going to say like uh, those first few years, which was like around 13, 13 years old, uh, I didn't even know theory existed. So um, I, I was just still, I still there. don't. <laughs> Does it exist? But, uh, what I would do is just try to like um, find like a combination of notes that I, that like uh, express how I felt. Like that's what the instrument was to me. I just thought people picked it up and then just played how they felt. So mm -hmm. that that was like my foundation for a few years until mm -hmm. I realized like oh you know there's actually like um, structure to this. You know? really? Yeah, that's when I started to really get into. Yeah. Um, teaching myself it's all self-taught i didn't you know go to a, a school and, and mm -hmm. learn that mm -hmm. way it's always just been all throughout my life having to be real responsible mm -hmm. and just um find the time to do it yeah you know? so and then and, and that's what people are seeking i really think in music it's probably like creativity and originality right like, yes all right at, at the same time i think it's interesting that you were listening to a lot of stuff but still you found time to be very creative and in because your music is very very original Oh yeah, I appreciate that because because you and I are working on a position together, and that's uh, the basis of really uh, what we do. I don't really have to show you the key of four. <laughs> you know, you know, kind of where it's really at, and and that's a great thing. It's a it's so wonderful to be able to introduce people to that that don't really have that beginning, but you have that yeah. beginning, and you've um, you really uh, understand kind of where, what you want to do in terms of um, expressing yourself and the instrument that you chose to do that with. Yeah, but, like, but the interesting thing about you is that you are very curious about the boundaries. And Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, oh, kind of froze there. How are we doing? Ah, good now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I was saying to you that, it's, yeah, it's important that, you know, the things that I turn you into, you kind of interpret that into your own experience. And you see how 
great composers. I don't think that we're doing anything any different than what other people have done earlier. Yeah. We're just contributing to the giant pool of, uh, you know, this manifestation of music. Mm -hmm. Kind of really what it is. And it's a, it's a calming device and it's a, it lets you kind of really just be part of, of, of the energy. That's uh, really what music it is. It's not, it's not something that needs to be owned personally. It's just really, I think you do a great job of that. And uh, I'm well, a I mean, no, you, You've helped really helped me develop, you know, how I approach, you know, composition. Um, like some of the other students were mentioning uh, the piano and the keyboard. You know, I've really pushed myself to do that a lot more and write specifically from there, you know, thanks to you, just because yeah. you've, you've pushed me to really look in the in history of composition and all of this. And I like the way you put it. You said divine music that exists out there. Yes. And, and there's just so much of it. And, yep. and it inspires me to just push those boundaries you know, and see how far I can take it. And if people, are, hopefully I can make it interesting that people want to listen to it. I think you are. I think you, I think you are now and I think you will. I mean, we're really looking forward to and completing this, this record uh, that, you know, that you're going to do uh, uh, for the label. And we're, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, you're very close to that. Um, yeah, uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> you're, you're getting there. You just keep making these, uh, these additions to, um, you know, um, obviously uh telling more stories with the particular songs that you uh, have and that's uh right that's something that we all deal with that's part of this this league part of this game right you gotta right it's all part of it it's part of um you know telling a story you know yeah. uh, you know philosophically but it's music right and yes. so that's that's the interesting thing because you know you have to listen to it and get the same emotion that you think that somebody else might get mm -hmm. and when they do get that you feel like you're doing your job yeah that, that's always yeah. the goal is uh because my, my music is very emotional. You know, I'm, I always connect and um, express myself through what yeah. I'm writing. Yeah. So I'm always hoping that when someone listens to it, they get that same, you know, yeah. feeling. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, um, uh, thank you for coming up and oh, yeah. uh, and talking to us. I'm going to see you pretty soon in a few days, I think. So yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm looking forward to that. And um, I, I'm looking forward to hearing some new material. Um, definitely. And I think everybody here, uh, you know, we all love new material. So it's, uh, it's, it's a great thing. You're one heck of a player and you're a gentleman and, uh, yeah, that means a lot to me. and thank you for joining us and, uh, talking with us, Tim. Yeah. You know? I mean, you're Tony McAlpine, man. This is a huge honor for me and it means a lot more to me than you probably realize. So thank you so much for having me. Love you, brother. Yeah. Love you too, man. Take it easy. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, we have a comment. It says, ordering a pizza now. Thanks for the inspiration. Oh, but is it coming to our house or does he need our address so that we can get it? What kind of pizza are you ordering? That's what I want to know, Nick. What's on that pizza? Hey, Mark, doesn't pizza sound in order? Can we go get one tonight? Yep. I would love to have one. You know, these musicians that, you know, we we listen to in our in our lives that they they provide such peace for us and you know i have so many different musicians that i listen to uh that provide a peace for me during all the craziness in this world i think that that's how i that's how i look at it it's almost like a medication a mental medication right mark it's like a mental medication it's a it's a great thing um uh you know it wouldn't be possible if uh, to do this music thing, if you didn't have an imagination. So you got to re realize that having an imagination is part of it. Um, I have worked most recently with some musicians that have incredible imagination too. Uh, you know, as an engineer and as a performer, Ada Yir, Rappenbach, what an incredible guitar player he poses as, a, as an engineer. And you know, he's a genius at it. But I'm sitting in a kitchen and he's playing guitar with him, and I'm like, what are you doing? And uh, you remember that? You remember what I'm, I'm, I'm like? Hey, what's I get it like that. Like, <laughs> um, that <laughs> I still remember that day. I didn't <laughs> know I played the guitar. Well, the first time I played it was like, what? <laughs> I've had the pleasure of working with him 
on, 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 on records and I've enjoyed it and I've learned so much from him and what I should and shouldn't do when I'm at home tracking by myself. <laughs> Luis, you need no explanation or, or any kind of invention of an introduction because I'm such a huge fan of your playing and, and everything. Thank that, you, my friend. That you do, my friend. You you just are a tremendous player. And uh, thank you, know, you so hey, much. It's a pleasure being here, man. So the world is your stage. You. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, thank although you. I don't see my picture back there, I see Eddie. Uh, Eddie I should be in. <laughs> I love that yeah, picture. Eddie. Eddie, it's amazing. Yeah, it's Eddie. a great picture. Tony, like such a pleasure being here, man. Like it's a, it's an honor. Dude, you know, I've got to say, isn't that an incredible loss? The loss of Eddie Van Halen. Oh my God. How yeah, did that affect you or for you when that happened? Man, uh, uh, to be honest, I knew Van Halen, of course, a lot of Eddie stuff, but I really got into Van Halen after he died because uh, how, how such an impact he had, you know. Of course, everybody knows it, but like the real impact changed everything, mm -hmm. the landscape of guitar playing forever. And, um, uh, Know, really deep because uh, uh, he's he's just the one you know he invented most of this stuff so I was really sad for like uh, weeks and weeks and it, it was like I knew him you know so you know it's like, it's like such the, the Jesus Christ of guitar died you know that, yeah, that's it, the it, best it, way I can put it past life that you know we live and I remember um, the, at, you know growing up going to those concerts you know watching um, the diver down concert watching one of the first concerts they were opening for black sabbath i i remember that he right. was part of uh, the jason um you know becker uh, benefit that that and uh -huh. you know he and i got a chance to talk to him yes you know he uh, you know uh, it, it, he was just like a funny individual just full of energy and just just amazing right. and uh obviously the contributions that he made are just huge and he's yeah. greatly missed and uh we appreciate oh, yeah. everything that he's oh done. yeah man and yeah. and uh that's just uh you know the, the, what the, year was that what year was the jason jeez you're asking me what you it's like asking me what time it is and what day it is <laughs> all right it was some time ago it was uh some time ago it was in chicago i remember that it was chicago. Okay. is that helpful with your research uh, you know <laughs> no yeah yeah I'll, I'll you you I've, right seen, I've seen a video when he he uh meets uh jason Beck and goes to his house might mm -hmm. be the same uh, kind of time period there. Lu Luis and I have this great um, I mean I mean it's a it's a blessing to be able to work with this man on the, on the lower part of the screen here. A true, true. I mean a true We genius. both share this opinion. Yes, a contributor to uh, you know the guitar art, really the music art. Okay, really, that's okay guys, you guys you guys will get those Zell like the, the broadcast. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about about um you 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 know tell us a little bit about the, you, your your becomings. You're you're from the countries and tell us about how it how it affected your creativity and tell us about Brazil and your life and tell us a little bit because we'd love to know. And this, this Me thing, or they, this for you? Love. Yeah. You guys can talk over each other. I, you know, it's like, you're the engineer. You just pull his finger down. <laughs> okay, so, so you, <laughs> yeah. you, you saw her there. Uh, I'm the guy who makes stuff, right? So I would be, be able to make our both vote, right? <laughs> That's the, 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 the thing. Well, I started in Brazil. Well, you, you create space. That's what you do. That's what you're always teaching me. Yeah. You got to create space for something to go to, right? Because we're... 38 tracks of keyboards we need, need space right i am a keyboard player at heart all right oh that's the but, i'm a keyboard player like every five, five minutes we're here <laughs> mixing you know i'm a keyboard player and like i'm a keyboard player like, but in the time of a guitar that's not fair i'm kidding. just kidding i despair with the rest of the humanity of the, the human you know humans well, in general. You know that it's, it, Tony is able to play keyboards and the guitar plays. That's not fair with all, all of us. You, I, <laughs> I, 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 I feel so blessed to have you involved working on the uh, the the Equilibrium record. And um, Luis being part of the videos. I can't wait to do some with you live. I mean, yeah, that's just going to be 
Uh, I mean, we're probably going to have you on a video screen because that's kind of like what you used to. And, and you know, we'll, we'll show the video screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I played the, the uh, bass on the video. And it was one of the yeah. worst, well, most difficult things I am. I learned one, two, two Tony Macau and songs. I only started show. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are hard, hard songs, man, to play. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, I wasn't making them hard. I was just trying to do what I thought should be done. No, I know it's it's second nature for you, but for us, it's and how to play it, you know, because to listen is like one one thing, yes. but then how to yes. break it down and learn it. I like about uh, your songs, like uh, you know, it, like I think my car sometimes I listen to your stuff, and and it's it's really cool how you put together things so sophisticated, but to listen to is very uh, simple to understand the melody mm. these you do. so mm. uh, I, I never forget that song uh, Poison Cookies that we, we, we did and then I came yeah. home and I said to other you man that song and he's like dude Poison oh, Cookies cool. that, I think that's my favorite song of yours man I, well thank you brother so much I heard that you were in Las Vegas doing some work yes yeah, so I was in the I mean, uh, last talk about that it says to, the bottom of the screen do not talk about him in Las Vegas. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, yeah, I was with the band. I've uh, been playing with Red Devil Vortex. It takes me a while. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so we were shooting two oh, videos the there, and we have a... Red Devil? Did you see yeah. the band? No, no, no. Uh, the show that they saw, uh, Maurice and Mark, uh, it was my solo show at the time. But, but, uh, but I already played with Red Devil, but I have my own thing. like. Like Red Devil has a full album produced, ready to be released next year. So now we're just doing the plans how to put it find together all the time as videos. All of it. I don't know. Yeah. How, how do how I does that work? find the time? Yeah, to learn and not confuse the songs you're playing with the other band. I mean, oh man, man. We, you know, that uh, was the most uh, thing about Mike. I, I that he's like, a lot, so. like all these different bands at one time. I'm like, dude, if I did that, I'd be playing the wrong songs and the wrong key at the wrong time for the <laughs> wrong band. You know? No, for. for for your stuff, I, I gotta tell you, like for your stuff, that caliber of, of like musician, more like straight, straightforward, more concentrated in the vocals, because you're the singer of your band, right, Tony? Solos and stuff, but uh, like all the parts of your songs, I, I had to, to stop like for a week just to listen, we played and nothing else, mm -hmm. you know, because they mm -hmm. demand a lot of attention. But anyway, wow. anyways, coming back to it's been really cool because I like produce our record and, and we're gonna to release it next year uh and, mm -hmm. and i was in Brazil a month and a half doing a guitar show tour so oh, that's that awesome. was really really cool I, yeah i did see a lot of people talked about you too well then thank you i appreciate that hey day you're right i gotta ask you yeah this. yeah it must come up to you a lot that you know people don't really i mean i i don't think they're able to put it in words but how do you find um the way to approach like all of these artists that you work with in such a unique way it's very unique and 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 uh you, you know you you can answer that it's, it's certainly not a cookie cutter approach that you have that you you work i mean the first time i ever met you i i, I was with my very dear late wife begonia and oh uh it, I mean, times that we spend time together i'm saying you know and i remember Easy you coming begonia. to Argentina yeah and, and uh Yes, and, and and you guys came and and uh, what what how is that approach like very unique with you? How do you? It, it's I like uh, original art from the artists as, as much as I can, you know, because I man, if I, I if all the time I try to sound like like me always, uh, let's say a hundred percent like I w want them to sound, you know, after five six years, every, everything I do it's gonna sound the same. So it's like I always try to to listen to what people want you know for example your music it's it's dynamic some of the previous records you wanted more powerful but the previous records like it's really dynamic it's almost like a like slash metal slash rock and roll party song <laughs> in the end yeah <laughs> yeah well, that's true so, like, the same like we and when I listen to Lewis' stuff, I think that the music speaks for your, for itself. You know, like when it's the, the, the things that I, 
I hear and I and I, I feel it's completely different when I hear your stuff. You know, so it's right. it's something natural for me. You know, like I, I don't know. That's that's that 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 happens all the time. Like some people want to work with you and blah blah blah, and then we talk a little bit, and and then I say, yeah, Tony McAlpin, and I sometimes I work work with bands like that, like the uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah. You know, yeah. Right, death metal band from North slash Los Angeles, and they're like, "Did you work with Tony McAlpin? Like, work with this band?" And so it's, I love that. It's, actually, I, I can do. I, I, I want to ask you big rock music. I, I want to ask you, like, you know? what is you because you work in all these different continents? What's the difference? What is it like working in Brazil as opposed, you know, musically the music scene as opposed uh -huh. to in Europe? as opposed to working in America, as opposed to working in all the places you go, you go everywhere. Come on, let's be serious. What, what is it like? How, do, how does that like transmit? Like it's crazy. It's, it's different because the people is different. You know, like when I'm, everything is so different. Like people's expectation, the coach of that, like has a big influence on the music. You know, it's, it, it was ever, I, I have to say, you were, you, you were, uh, you were a good, uh, you were, you are like uh, like Jim Fallon from for the musician like question, <laughs> but it's like it's it's crazy because I clearly uh, feel that when I'm in Brazil, like, like people has you know like, like same in Europe, like people are different, you know same here. And, but but in the end, of course, it's all music. But again, what I try to is to like listen to what uh, to 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 you know, what what. Uh, are the musician uh, the musicians expecting from their what they expect from the album and that's the thing like when i'm in brazil this you know like when i'm here in europe it, they expect di different things than when i'm oh. really different you know yeah but I, I will not say it's the same but based personality you know like uh but you but you have a consistency uh, that's enigmatic over every day i mean it's, it's just it, because it, it you're you know, the every, first one of the first guys that I've ever worked with that I was like, yeah, get it together. I, I, I know you remember this. And I go, and I'll reach you later for the comments about, and you just, I should have known then that you were a guitar player because everything was perfect. The melody lines were here and the rhythm <laughs> were perfect. And I, didn't, I was like, first, it was like getting a Christmas present. I, I had nothing to say. I, I, I swear, it was like, like in the first record, you said the first song, the first piece, Remix, like no comments. I swear, like here is the the it's like. I was talking to Mike at the time, Michael Masker, and I was like, "Is everything okay?" Like, and the the whole record, we almost had, you know. And I was still like, "Is this yes. real?" <laughs> yes. yes. It's like yes. I try to do every time I, I I'm I get in the studio with a band to get the the band's vibe. You know, it it's not about me; it's about them. You know. Yes. Want to learn from them? I want to. I, I want to understand them. You know, like what are the what they're expecting from the music? Well, you know? So bless you for all of the contributions that you've made to music. Really, I. I mean, I. I can't wait to work with you on some of these new projects that we're talking about doing with developing this the new students records, and uh, you know, Luis. You know, it's just so wonderful to for you to have this 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 professor. As a brother, a household family member. Dude, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest that he completely changed my life in many, many only personally, but uh, as a reference of work ethic, dollars can also... <laughs> I'm going to keep talking, so <laughs> prepare your pocket. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, he he teach me uh, a lot. He taught me a lot of things not... I always say to bands that I recommend him that it's uh, he's a good producer with a vision of career development and what are the next steps that you should take and you know uh, how he will take in the market you know what I mean yeah yeah so I think coming like just just answering a little bit of the talk about that specific uh, uh, what is different about Brazil and the states and we we always talk exactly. about how, how, sure. the, yeah I, I think I think here you have more more resources and therefore people pour attention to things and, and uh, things are less worthy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I don't have a lot of resources, things are expensive, but people, you can see in their 
eyes, you know, the shining when they do something that, you know, something small, maybe just record a song or two. Things are not accessible. Uh, yeah. Therefore, people will give more value, I think. South America yeah. in general and, and, and third world countries. But in America, you have more resources and you with who has, has the more resources because then you have the more, more opportunities and a bigger market to, and, 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 you know, just, just work with. So I think that would be the biggest difference. Now, are you in town? Are you in yes, town? Yes, yes. I, I came back, back yeah, three days ago. Yeah. Oh, Chris, I just saw oh, the dog. He <laughs> loves dogs. Oh, my goodness. What do you have to say about that, Marissa? He's so cute. He Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had to cut you up, Luis, with the dog. He, he pulled the dog trick. No, he's worth it. He's, it's worth it. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. We keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. No, I already said it, but coming back. But to, back, to in town, yeah. back in town, yeah. Back in town. Yeah, so yeah. I was I'm back base because uh, I spent a month in, and you, and you, in you Brazil. Shot a and... You shot a vid out there and you did a record or, or what did you do? Uh, you I was in Brazil doing a guitar show tour. Guitar show is the name of my, my clinic because I don't uh, uh, usually very boring, you know, so I I cannot sit still and play. I like to perform and give my best. So I created the... I know that about videoing with you. I had to keep getting pushed out of the screenshot. Because you know, like you're moving so <laughs> Hey Tony, no, but, uh, you're in my swing space. I need to <laughs> no, dude. no for, for you, but I, I think clinics in, in general I would that I, I don't relate to. So I created these events where you go to a bar or even sometimes like or a little theater. And uh, um I did sixteen dates across the country and it was it, it's years uh, since I last been to Brazil. Uh, before this time, yeah. So I missed a lot of people a lot have in America. And I know yeah, that one time we talked about work. together in Europe, and we almost had that together. But you know, we had some different things happen with COVID and all that. But we got to get that together. And uh, yeah. it would be great to yeah, have yeah. You there, and you come out and play some stuff with me and all that other kind of crap. And and you know, also, uh, you know, if you know, who knows who's going to cover you know Ada Year's flights to get over there so that. He <laughs> I can play bass. Uh, okay. I can try. I can just now you can just use... shut us all down and play guitar. Yeah, you know, we're happy with that too. True. We, we will play bass for you. That's double bass. <laughs> <laughs> just both of you guys are such tremendous players. I mean, it goes without saying. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure. Uh, not even half. Here. Thanks for having us. Not even a quarter of what you guys can do. Like, but I, I, I will. I'm happy with the comment. Like, well. <laughs> You know he's shy when he comes to his guitar playing because he sometimes he picks up the guitar and he, uh, lead, he as a lead player, but as a, a rhythm player, he he's he changed my perspective of what to get the best sound of the guitar. So, dude, like, he's like James crazy. Bond. He just like I didn't know he played. I'm sitting in the kitchen and he picks up the guitar. And he's like, <laughs> this is five. This is seven. Dude, he's just playing all these crazy things. I'm like, what the. What are you doing? I'm trying to eat my pizza. I remember oh, one call where I was playing the guitar while we were talking on the phone. And you, you, and you were like, "Stop shredding!" <laughs> I'll never play again in front of you. <laughs> yeah, just amazing. You guys, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I love you guys so much. It's so good seeing you and capping it off. Same from here, Tony. Same from here. Thank Tony. you for coming in and, and, and checking in, and saying hi, and. And uh, and tell all the people there in the area that I said hello. And uh, we gotta, you know, we gotta. Sure. I, I gotta put the bike back together again. The boost. I gotta put them. I realized that when you rebuild the motor, you gotta put the motor back in the bike. So yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can't just go look at what I've done. Sometimes we have to do it. Like yeah. every once in a while, I'm back in the bike <laughs> and uh, fire it up. But you know, I'll do that. You guys, thank you so much for coming out, saying hi. And uh, we'll do this again. And we all got to play together again soon, Luis. We're going to do something. Yes. All right. Yes. Congra yes. Congratulations on all your stuff. Congratulations on what do you have new coming out that you worked on at Ada or any new projects that, that you want to say something? I've about? been working. I've been working a lot with a lot of bands, like uh, people from the U.S., from it's London, seizure. from like uh, Seizure. I did yeah. Seizure. I did the Red Devil Vortex. Like it was amazing. Uh, I have some cool stuff like coming on, like uh, a lot of Dirks. 
projects like it's <laughs> I'm quite busy, but I'm happy. Eric happy. Here and what a Super great this was such a blessing to have him on on the Equilibrium record. Oh yeah. my gosh, like just best drummer, best person in the planet. Oh the my best, god, the best, the best, and you know the best in the business. Just wonderful. Um, awesome. All right, you guys, love you all. So take care of yourselves. Love you, Tony. Thank you, you very much for having me. Right. Ciao. Us here. All right. Bye. Ciao. 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 And uh, we are probably uh, going to look at the, some of the questions we have here, huh? Those guys are just in, in, in incredible. I mean, all the great, uh, uh, great things that we had to talk about. Hey, we're fighting about the mouse. Most people just like stomp on the mouse. What do they mean about students albums? Well, so the students are the, some of the earlier, uh, you know, uh, we had such tremendous players on earlier, uh, Cyril, uh, our Landeschamp, uh, um, Justin Case, and Timothy Quinn. Uh, I teach a lot of guitar students, uh, you know, the, 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 the methods of improving the things that they they're, uh, have a desire to, to get better at, uh, you know, the composition and certain playing features and different things. And, uh, and they've gotten to the point where these things are really part of their nature, which is kind of what you, uh, you know, you, you hope to reach as a player and, um, and, and they've reached that. And, and because we have this label, um, you know, there's, you know, the McAlpin wrote it, put out, uh, the equilibrium records and we are recording, um, some of these students, um, you know, their compositions on their own records. Uh, so it's a great way for them to be able to, um, uh get their um get their material uh done what would you like this thing oh okay she wants the keys to the car here you're gonna go shopping um it's it's a it's a great way for them to uh for them and i together to work in in a continuation of uh the ideals that we worked on so uh and get them to the point where we can record these things and uh their, their aspirations are, are, are always like most of us to be able to be in a position where they can record things uh, and, uh, and put out a record, so to speak. And that's what we mean by the students' albums. I'm a student too. I'm a student of the arts. Ain't I, Marky? Yeah. I'm a student of the arts. So that's what it's all about. That's what that means. That's a great question. And uh, we are giving things uh, to people that are important things. That's just what my teachers gave to me. They gave me things, uh, their time and their effort and their, um, you know, their, uh, I would probably say their commitment and love about music, the best that they could to apply it to something that I could interpret. And that's uh, the same method that I have, giving things. Uh, and uh, it's been a pleasure to talk with all these wonderful friends of mine. We have to do this on a regular basis. I swear, we got to keep doing this. Don't you think, you guys? We got we to gotta do this pretty regularly. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. So speaking of giving, we have to talk about, we should talk about the giveaway. And who? Do we know who the winner is? Or do we have to? Do we, do we, we really know who the, the you know, I've got to tell you. The winner is, do I announce the the name or just the everything? I can see it now. Uh, I know it's Jordan Berg. Jordan Berg. And, uh, and there it is. Woo! That's awesome. Hello, Jordan. We'll get together and talk. And uh, what am I giving him? A car or a lawnmower or a, a free lesson? Oh, kids, you know, hey, you know, you can interpret that however you want. <laughs> Jordan, um, congratulations, brother. Congratulations. I hope you uh, enjoy the, uh, the session we spent together. I think we shall. And how are we doing, kiddos? Are these people about uh, ready to go nighty night? Are they tired? Yeah, how are we doing? 
Yeah, we're doing good. Do you have any more questions that I can read here? Give me some more questions a little bit before while I'm here. And uh, new made in Japan. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> so I have nothing in my column. I okay. I love this question. Did I ever play with Alan Holder? I never did. I, he did invite me, Chris. You were asking me this, Chris Palowski. Did I ever play with Holdsworth? I didn't play with with Holdsworth. But I did go to an AM show and he had two syntax set up and I was sitting in the front row and he was like, Tony, I have two syntax, you know, here, you want to come up and jam with me? And I said, politely, no, uh, I wasn't ready for that. But uh, I do did love going to his concerts and it, 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 it was great. We worked with um, such wonderful players, uh, you know, and I, I remember the very first time I met him was like in the 90s in France. And it was a passion guitar festival. And I asked him so many questions. He goes, my God, you should be a journalist. Because <laughs> I knew just about every record he played on from like Soft Machine to, you know, all those bands before any of the things that, you know, we know that, you know, that he actually did. So, um, yeah, it's a great question. Holdreth was really, truly amazing. Yep. Now, uh, what, what else do we have here that's, that's pretty... Pepperonis, pepperonis, and extra mozzarella. Mozzarella. Yeah, I love mozzarella. Oh, look, and this is a nice way. Uh, this is cool. How are you doing? Any new albums coming out soon? So I told you, we're working on the cab record. We're working on the students' records. And we're working on another instrumental record for me. And I will let you know what the title is that shortly. I just uh, haven't decided on what that should be. Any questions you see there? With your wonderful eyesight. How old are your eyes? Okay, yeah, I will. I will. Hey, hang on there, whippersnapper. Uh, <laughs> any funny stories from the 80s shrapnel record days and being part of pushing shred guitar to the mainstream? You know, one of the greatest things that was really a uh, learning experience for me was working with Steve Smith and and him, like, you know, reprimanding me be, for for me jumping ahead of the click. You know, he really got me in line with that. You know, you're going from playing in a, you know, in a band that you're not in a recording environment. When you're in a recording environment, everybody's trying to, you know, get the right takes down. And, you know, he was like, you know, made me very aware of all the different parts of the click track and where I should be with that. And uh, that was a great learning experience working with uh, Steve Smith and Billy Sheehan on the very first record we ever did uh, together. And uh, then I had the pleasure of, uh, you know, it was ironic because uh, I remember telling you that too, Mark. Remember about the, the, the Steve Smith? I had journey posters hanging up in the room and Steve Smith was the drummer. I'm talking about back when I was a, you know, young kid. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, I ended up him being the, the very first drummer on, on, on a band, uh, that I recorded. And that was uh, truly amazing. And then of course, working with Billy and all the different, um, outfits, you know, from devil slingshot to, you know, the edge of insanity record and working together with him with Steve Smith. I mean, not with, with Steve, I, that was absolutely totally amazing. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's like. Wow, these things can't be by chance, huh? What do you think? What do you guys think about that? Do I have any plans to release chamber music or a range of older songs and other classical instruments? I we are gonna be, you know, we weren't supposed to talk about some things, right? You said, no, we're not talking about any, we're not talking about any classical music. <laughs> it's a big boss here, but uh, yeah, we uh we will let everything breathe on its own, right? There'll be stuff coming out and we'll talk about it in the future, and you guys will know what it means and I do have some plans to do that, but I'm not supposed to have said that, but I did. Mars, McAlpine, Aldridge, Rock, and Sarzo. I hope there's another one of those records. Rudy Sarzo, uh, such a wonderful guy. We went down to LA, yeah, and we're on his, uh, you know, his 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 um, his podcast. It was absolutely amazing. Love Rudy. Just a um, beautiful cat. And Tommy, I haven't seen in a while, but he's just a, another amazing um, um, person. And what a contributor and what a history, uh, his contributions to rock and roll. And of uh, course, Rob Rock, just uh, we were, we're really from the same area, uh, you know, in the East Coast. And uh, I miss that guy. Just a uh, unique and amazing musician. Yeah. 
How about a Franz Liszt album? How about it? Yeah, yeah. What should we do? Some. What would we do? Um, we could do something. We could. We could. We could do that. Any plans about playing in Rio or Brazil? Not offhand. Um, uh, but you'll be the first to know when I make a decision towards that. I, I'd love to do an American tour. Right, Mark? I'm always talking about doing an American oh, yeah. tour and, and uh, promoting, uh, you know, the, the latest record here. And then uh, by then, of course, a newer record will be done. So uh, that's, that's how I look at it, you know. I look at it uh, that way. It's been wonderful hanging out with everybody. How are we doing? We're heading out. We're going to – the pizza's arrived? I, I didn't hear the doorbell. Oh. Oh, there it is. That's a weird doorbell, huh? <laughs> you guys, we love you so much. I love you. Thank you very much for joining in and saying hello and uh, meeting everybody that uh, came out to um, talk tonight. It was so, so great for you to be able to um, to talk with, uh, um, you know, everybody and experience it and listen to the conversations. Um, you know, uh, we're going to see you next time. And uh, cheers. Take care of yourself. And uh, I got to get back to Greece. This was just a wonderful school. Wonderful place. Ciao. We love you all.